Once again, good morning everyone. Uh, we are currently joined by 191 participants via Zoom. This is in addition to those joining us via Facebook Live and YouTube. Within the theater, we have around almost 200 participants, which I hope uh, will settle down in a while as we will begin our program soon. Also, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our honorable guest speaker. Undersecretary Benedicto Ernesto R. Bitonio Jr. Please give him a round of applause, everyone. As well as the new Dean of the College of Law, uh, Attorney Arli uh, Dean Darlene Berberabe. Now that everyone settled down, may I request everyone to please rise for our national anthem. Please have your seat. Honored Dean, faculty, students, and guests and officials, good morning and welcome to the UP College of Law Labor Clusters Lecture this morning, entitled Developments in Labor Law, Issues and Challenges, with the theme meeting the ends of social justice. And we're very glad that we have a full house today, both physically and online, considering the importance of this topic that we will discuss today, this constitutionally enshrined topic. And to begin our program, I would like to call on the head of our UP Law Labor Cluster, uh, Professor Leo D. Batad. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. 
Welcome to the Malcolm Theater of the College of Law. But before, uh, first of all, I would like to thank our beloved deans, faculty, and students of the different law schools uh, in the National Capital Region, as well as in uh, Visayas, Mindanao, and other parts of Luzon. So uh, today, of course, we are honored with the presence of our distinguished guest, speaker, uh, Benedicto Ernesto R. Bitonio, and our very own, our uh, newly elected Dean of the UP College of Law, who took her oath of office just this morning, Dean Darlene Marie B. Berberabe. So uh, thank you very much. Undertaking this activity is the law class, law, labor law cluster's commitment to advance labor rights and industrial peace towards uh, meeting the end of social justice. For everyone's uh, information, the labor law cluster is just one among the law course clusters and uh, the aim is actually to provide a forum for faculty members to discuss academic and administrative matters regarding teaching, but more importantly, to provide a venue for exchange of ideas between and among our uh, faculty members, students, trade union members, and, uh, and other civil uh, society and labor organizations. In the article of authors Jesus Felipe and Leonardo Lanzona Jr. on unemployment, labor laws, and economic policies in the Philippines, they posited that underemployment and unemployment are the Philippines' uh, most important problems and the key indicators of the weakness of the economy. If I may add, these problems are also the major factors uh, for uh, that, uh, that pushes our major factors that push our workers to seek uh, economic opportunities abroad. And uh, I can attest to that personally because in my three sections of labor law, uh, there are actually, uh, uh, at least a very big number of uh, students who have at least direct relations with uh, overseas workers, Filipino workers, either they have parents or siblings or relatives. And I'm quite sure our uh, other faculty members in all law schools could attest to that. Indeed, labor is regarded as a critical determinant of economic growth. The labor question, therefore, never ceases to challenge or if I may say, bedevil, uh, most especially our government officials and economists. Well, we are happy today that we have our distinguished guest, Under Secretary Bitonio, uh, who has graciously accepted our invitation to share with us his studies, uh, his views and comments on this very important labor question. So thank you very much. Under Secretary Bitonio for uh, your gracious time and effort, and also for our dean, who, uh, despite her very busy schedule, you know, because of so many congratulatory messages and uh, you know attentions uh, 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 from other people, thank you very much for your presence, and to everyone here in face-to-face uh, -face and online. Thank you very much at isang mapagpalaya at makabuluhang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Prof. Leo, for those welcome remarks. We would like now to call on our very own Commissioner Cecilio Alejandro C. Villanueva of the um, Commission of National, Commissioner of National Labor Relations Commission and a faculty member of the UP College of Law to introduce our guest speaker this morning. Commissioner Villanueva. Thank you, Attorney Redoble. So how will I introduce our 
guest speaker. So, according to his past, to his present, and to his future. So, mga, sabi ko nga kay Yusek, 10 pages. Okay? So, pass mo na tayo. So, he grew up in uh, Santa Ilocos. Sur ba? So, yes. Okay? And then, uh, he enrolled in the UP Diliman way back in 1978. So, graduated uh, 82 sa BA. Graduated sa law school ng 1989. So, he spent the most productive and learning years niya sa UP Diliman. And let me estimate, mahina tayo sa math, siguro mga more than a decade siya nag-aral sa UP. Siguro walang pang-paaral yung magulang ni Yusek, kaya pwede ka paaral sa UP. Okay? So, uh, he was an instructor sa AS, AS pa nung araw yun, na Okay? Uh, 1982 to 1988. Then he obtained a master de degree in public administration, ano, public management, sorry, way back 2004 from the National University of Singapore with attendance at Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, and then he earned the Best Student and Best Paper Awards. Palakpakan naman natin. So, uh, part pa rin to ng PAS, page 3. Okay? <laughs> Professional background and experience. So, uh, he passed the bar in 1990. Okay? Ay, I forgot. Magkaklase pala kami ni Dean nung araw. Siya yung nasa harap, kami nasa likod. Sila'y nag-aaral, kami hindi. Sila'y nagpapasa ng uh, notes case digest sa amin. Ganon ka-generous yan din. Ngayon wala nang ganon. Sila'y nagtatago ng skra kasi nag mahirap ang library no araw dito eh. Nagtataguan ng skra. Okay? Then, uh, practicing lawyer 2007-2022 with specialization in labor, corporate, civil, and admin law. So after passing the bar, he has focused himself in the field of labor. So he teaches labor law and graduate courses in industrial relations and labor policy. Uh, he is a faculty member but on leave dito sa UP College of Law. He has written and published articles Papers on Labor Laws and Industrial Relations. He is frequently a lecturer sa subject matter natin, expert on industrial relations, labor law, and management in both international and local fora. Yung local fora, kasama na po dyan yung Senate at yung Congress na madalas po siyang pinapagalitan ng mga senador at congressman dahil hindi nila maintindihan sa lalim ng sinasabi ng ating USEC kung ano yung labor law. Okay? Kaibigan mo ata si Senator Tolentino at si Senator Tulpo. Okay? Uh, aside from his work as, ex as executive vice president, the DBP, yan, nag- uh, uh, focus na rin siya sa labor. So, nung mula, 1988, ha, siguro, uh, pag-graduate pa lang siya sa College of Law, Senior Labor and Employment Officer, naging Division Chief, naging Head Executive Assistant, Special Assistant to uh, Dole Secretary, naging uh, Director ng Bureau of Labor Relations nung 2000 up to 2004, Assistant Secretary ng Dole. Then, uh, naging Undersecretary ng Dole noong 2005. Naging Chairperson, designate pa po siya, Governing Board ng ating ECC, National Wage and Productivity Commission. At ito po, uh, hindi ko lang siya inabot, naging uh, Chairman po namin siya sa NLRC. 
Okay? Sayang, hindi ko pa siya naabutan. I was appointed 2015. So, page 6. Ano ba to? Member of the Board of Directors, Small Business Guarantee Corporation, Chairperson Committee on Technical Cooperation, Philippine representative to the governing body ng uh, ILO, has been engaged as an international expert by international organizations. Okay? Then, uh, yun po yung konting mga five pages on his past. For his present, he is the undersecretary ng DOLE. Hindi po DOL, ha? DOLE, ha? Iba yung Dol, Del Monte ato, pineapple lang ginagawa nun. Uh, siya po ang head ng uh, Labor Relations, Policy International Affairs Cluster, and Regional Operations Cluster. Siya ang chairperson designate ng National Wages and Productivity Commission. Okay. Uh, page 7. Uh, member designate of the Board of Directors ng Land Bank. Uh, Pag-ibig fund and PESA. Uh, sana may pera pa tayo sa land bank. <laughs> Has over 20 years experience in government holding various technical, management, executive, and policy and decision-making positions. So, what about his future? Yan. Page 8. Just go. Uh, when we had a vacancy sa uh, office namin for the position of chairman, his name was considered. Okay? He already held that position, so he must be the logical choice. But last that we heard from Marites, he was prevailed upon to turn down the offer. Dole, without a doubt, needs his caliber, expertise, leadership, and charisma. In dealing with stakeholders and fellow workers in the government. I do hope that when the new dean of the UP College of Law, Dean Lelen, who happens to be the sister of my uh, doormate in Molabe. I used to see her uh, nung bata pa siya. Uh, uh, maganda na siya nung araw. Mas maganda siyempre ngayon. Lalo na din. Okay? So, I hope that uh, the new dean will offer him back to be the part of the faculty. Huh? And uh, for our resource person, not to turn it down, okay? <laughs> and believe you me, that especially with his qualities I mentioned, especially the charisma side, yeah, he can do a lot, lot more, better, best sa UP College of Law. So, page 10. So, we eagerly await his insights and perspectives on his topic for today. So, it is my distinct honor and pleasure. And let us give a very warm welcome to our Dole Undersecretary, Benedicto Ernesto R. Betonio, Jr. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner uh, Ted Villanueva, for that uh, uh, kind introduction. Uh, and for taking, for eating up a portion of my lecture time. <laughs> uh, 
Commissioner Villanueva sometimes is late for appointments. So I was telling him, and as usual, he was late this morning. So I was telling him, maybe I should be the one to introduce you and you should be the one to deliver this lecture. Uh, but uh, uh, kidding aside, uh, let me thank the uh, UP College of Law and the UP Law Center, uh, particularly the uh, labor cluster of uh, the college uh, for inviting us here uh, to share our views on a matter that is very, very important to uh, not only to the academic study of industrial relations, but also to society. So on behalf of the Secretary of Labor and Employment, Secretary Bienvenido Ila Guesma, and on my personal behalf as well, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we are joined today by, uh, by uh, a diverse group of, uh, of uh, uh, what, I, what I would call lifelong students of uh, industrial relations and labor law. Uh, and I'm happy to be with you uh, this morning. It's so nice to be starting this joyous uh, month of uh, December in a place where I started my journey toward becoming a lawyer. Uh, I remember that uh, taking my final examinations in criminal law here, here in, uh, in, Malcolm, uh, in, in the Malcolm Theater, five seats apart. Using, a, using the old blue books, I do not know if you still use the blue books, uh, in which uh, there are two words written in, on, on, the, on the front page. Honor, excellence. And so we were asked to, or we were told to sit five seats apart because we were presumed to be without honor. <laughs> <laughs> But in any case, uh, in any case, uh, let me also, uh, the uh, dean has left uh, for a meeting, I think, with the uh, president. And let me also be the first to congratulate her publicly for her election as uh, dean of the new dean of the UP College of Law. Kahit wala, pa, wala siya dito, ay palakpakan ulit natin si dean. I was... Uh, extended the, uh, the kindness and charity of choosing my topic today. Uh, according to uh, Professor Batad, you can choose a topic of your choice. Uh, so, thinking that uh, this would be a group of academicians and students, I thought that I should not talk about jurisprudence because that's what you are, going, you are doing anyway. But uh, uh, speaking of jurisprudence, I am better known as the respondent in UST versus Bitonio. Ako yun, nung bata pa ako, 1999. I, I wrote that in 1999. So uh, I do not know if that's going to happen again. But I, I did decide something two weeks ago that might find its way to the Supreme Court. And that's the case of uh, Shapi. So let's await for that, uh, for the developments of that case. But in any case, uh, I thought about talking about the developments, issues, and challenges in labor and employment uh, from the perspective of a policymaker and as a labor administrator. Uh, uh, the, I, I have an outline. Pwede bang mga professor kasi sanay na, hindi sanay sa rostrum, di ba? Dito na lang ako. Uh, I, uh, I will start with a brief background and context, current state of labor and employment, and then DOLE and the socioeconomic agenda, very briefly. And then uh, I'll talk about uh, some developments and what this might mean to us, including recent laws affecting labor, as well as old laws with evolving applications. And then we are going to talk about practical applications and issues, what we are seeing at the ground level. I will not exhaust the list, but I will just uh, give some, some, uh, some of the, some of the uh, uh, key areas that we should be looking at. And then I know that uh, 
I know that uh, uh, the college and the UP Law Center also has a project on labor law reforms. So I thought about, uh, about including the I thought about including the uh, targeted areas for administrative reforms uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the DOLE is uh, planning to undertake. And then the transformations in the world of work, the world is changing, so let's talk about that a little bit. I was given 45 minutes, hindi ko lang alam kung matatapos ko ito. Uh, That is what technology is about, diba? If it doesn't work, you use your voice. That is what you call a voice-operated uh, a voice-operated uh, system. Uh, so the uh, back... Uh, Well, next slide, please. <laughs> uh, who and how Dole serves? Uh, I think you are familiar with the term tripartism, and uh, that is how Dole works. Uh, we are the only executive uh, department in the government which uh, has tripartism incorporated in its system of governance. What that means is... Uh, uh, Whenever there are key policy uh, issues that need to be discussed or need to be decided, there has to be a consultative process with the representatives of employers and workers because these are our uh, main constituents. We call them the social partners. And the reason why the DOLE has this triangle is because of the concept of tripartism. Uh, and uh, from a larger uh, context, uh, our universe is large. We serve formal and informal workers, employed or unemployed. We also serve local or overseas, organized or unorganized. Uh, lately, we have uh, less to do with overseas uh, employment. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, later on. And then we also serve employers medium and large enterprises, micro and small enterprises, agriculture and non-agriculture, organized and organized employers. So it's a broad universe that we serve. Next slide, please. And if you are going to look at this snapshot of labor and employment, uh, Professor Batad mentioned earlier about the uh, challenges that we face in the labor and employment field, including the challenge of uh, promoting gainful and productive employment and decent work, and also the other challenge of uh, reducing unemployment and, and, and underemployment. Uh, we, have a, we are a very big country. Population is uh, 112 million as of uh, 2023. And uh, if we are talking about labor, we are talking about this uh, segment of the population, which is 15 years old, and over, which we call the working age population, uh, 77 million. And out of that, uh, out of this, uh, uh, some will be in school or not in school, but uh, they are idle, uh, standing by, but some will be working. So this is uh, the labor force. You have uh, out of a working age population of 77 million, you have uh, 51 million in the labor force, 60 plus percent in the labor force. Uh, and uh, in the labor force, you have employed and unemployed. Uh, you have 48 million plus employed. Uh, and of those employed, uh, some are underemployed, meaning to say they are looking for more work or looking for more income. Uh, and uh, some would be unemployed. No work at all. Uh, according to the latest statistics, we have an unemployment rate of about 4.5% now, which is theoretically full employment. 
Uh, but uh, if uh, that is in theory full employment, why are we still poor? Uh, the, 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 uh, which, uh, what that means is that you ought to be looking at the quality of employment. Uh, there is a problem of underemployment. Uh, the kind of jobs that we are generating are not the high-paying jobs. Most of these are low-paying, low-skilled elementary occupations like doing, uh, doing repairs in uh, repair shops, doing trade, etc., etc., doing retail. Uh, so we want to upgrade the quality of jobs. That's a social. That's a social objective that all, we all want to uh, achieve. So the employed, you will have the wage and salary workers. By the way, employers are part of the employed. Uh, you have the self-employed, you have the unpaid family workers. Basically, you have 30 million wage and salary workers. So why is this important? It is important because uh, for us in the college, for the students in the college and for the practitioners, uh, this is where the battleground is. The formal sector, as they call it, wage and salary workers. Uh, in the Department of Labor, uh, you have two types of wage and salary workers, those in the private sector and those in the public sector. The mandate of the Department of, of Labor is uh, focused on the private sector. So if you are looking at, that, uh, at this universe, uh, this is the area where much of your learnings in book three, book four, book five uh, would be, uh, would be uh, material, or including book six, uh, post-employment, which is ironic. Post-employment, book six. Uh, it is start, the, first, the first article in book six is... Uh, Security of tenure. Uh, bakit kaya nandu doon yun? Eh? Post employment na yun. Hindi naman, hindi naman, uh, hindi na, wala naman ng employment, di ba? Uh, but in any case, uh, maybe there was a wisdom to that, uh, to that, uh, to that arrangement. And maybe the wisdom in that arrangement comes from some international wisdom because we do have a template of uh, an international labor code done in 1950s, which uh, never got to be enacted at the International Labor Organization. But if you want to take a look at it, it's there in the archives of the ILO. Uh, but in any case, to go back to this, wage and salary workers, as I've said, uh, for purposes of applying the labor code, uh, we are talking about, uh, about uh, wage and salary workers in the private sector. So this is where our universe is. Next slide, please. Uh, there are some uh, macroeconomic indicators uh, uh, that will tell us uh, the challenges or that will provide context to the challenges and problems that we face as labor administrators uh, specifically and as a society as a whole. Uh, you have a real GDP growth rate starting in 2018, 5.7, 7.6 in 2022. Tumataas, and then bumaba yung 2023. Tumaas, uh, ang, ang ambisyon natin ay maging ma-achieve by the year 2028 a uh, growth rate of about 6.5% to 8% uh, because that kind of uh, percentage is uh, the percentage that will enable the economy to generate more quality jobs. Uh, the uh, per capita uh, GNP, GNI, uh, right now we, are, uh, we have a per capita GNI of uh, uh, 3,456 3, dollars and we are uh, hoping that, we will, that we'll reach 6,044 uh, by 2028 and along with that you have a poverty reduction rate of uh, target of 8.8 to 9%. It's uh, currently about 17% uh, uh, as of the latest count. So there is, a, there is a, uh, in, an inverse correlation between GDP growth rate per capita and of course poverty incidence. Pag lumalayo ito ay mas magandang, mas magandang ibig sabihin. Pag uh, nagwa-widen yung gap nito. 
mas magandang ang ang uh, ekonomiya. So we have a labor and employment plan that uh, that was approved by the cabinet and that was uh, that was uh, and whose results matrices were formulated two weeks ago. Uh, the focus would be to promote gainful employment opportunities and human resource development. Uh, to protect and promote workers' rights and welfare, and to promote and maintain industrial peace. Next slide, please. So this, these are basically the Dole's mandate. Masyadong mabilis. Kung sabi yung next slide, next click lang. Salam. Marami ito, mga 20 clicks ito eh. <laughs> to slide na ito. Uh, okay. So what is, what, is, what is part of the DOLS mandate? It is re uh, as reflected in the Labor and Employment Plan, the first mandate of the DOLE is to promote gainful employment opportunities and human resource development. We do employment facilitation. Meron tayong mga labor market information systems. We have the public employment service offices which collate the vacancies as well as the job seekers and, and uh, mat matches them so that uh, so that uh, the the uh, the uh, the uh, demanders or the employers will find the right fit for their vacancies and that the seekers meaning to say the workers will find the uh, their ideal or at least at least their best option among a range of options uh, also human resource development uh, we have uh, uh, we supervise, by the way, under this mandate, the DOLE supervises uh, the uh, public employment service offices of the, uh, that, you've, that you see in LGUs. Uh, on the other hand, under human resource development, we do have a hand in technical and vocational training uh, because uh, one of the attached agencies of the Department of Labor and Employment is the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. Uh, which uh, provides uh, uh, training for uh, the middle level, for the middle level technical, uh, technical and vocational needs of the of the country. Next, uh, click. Protect and pro promote workers' rights and welfare. Uh, you see this. Uh, you see this. Uh, how is this done? Uh, in many ways. Uh, the provision of minimum labor standards, uh, the provisions of the labor code, which you find mostly in book three, uh, would be part of that. Uh, the baseline standards below which uh, uh, labor standards should not fall. Uh, kaya meron tayong minimum wage, meron tayong, meron tayong uh, uh, mga, mga normal working hours, uh, Nandiyan yan, papasok yung protection and promoting workers' rights and welfare. And from an administrator's point of view, ano bang ginagawa ng Department of Labor dyan? Well, basically, uh, the uh, part of the mandate of the Department of Labor is to undertake labor inspection. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's where it comes in. Uh, labor inspection and of course labor education, labor management education, because we do understand that there are many employers and much and even more workers who do not actually know their rights and obligations next click and then of course promoting and maintaining industrial peace uh, including conciliation and mediation and arbitration through the national labor relations commission uh, there are also other bodies in the department of labor and employment which uh, actually resolve cases. Uh, petitions for certification election, for instance, is not resolved by the labor arbiter, it's resolved by the med arbiters, and all the way to the Secretary of Labor. Uh, Intra-union disputes, resolved by the, by the, uh, by the, uh, by the med arbiters. Uh, cancellation of the union registration, resolved by the regional director at the initial stages. Uh, our system of labor dispute resolution is quite fragmented and complex, and it's also multi-level. Mahabang historia yung hanggat sa ma-resolve yung iyong dispute sa Supreme Court. That the, if it is a certification election case, it can do two cycles to the Supreme Court. Uh, for instance, the order of the med arbiter, 
granting or denying a petition for certification election can be appealed to the Secretary of Labor, to the Court of Appeals, and to the Supreme Court. If it is affirmed, okay, you conduct a certification election, then it goes down for implementation after the certification election order is issued, that can still be appealed to the Secretary, to the Court of Appeals, and, and to the Supreme Court. Uh, so if you look at a case like uh, San Miguel Supervisors Union versus La Guesma, that took all of 21 years to resolve, two cycles. Uh, and we say, in labor law that a petition for certification election is not a proceeding of a litigious character but of a fact-finding nature. But it takes us 21 years to do that in, in certain cases. So that's a challenge. That's a challenge. The system actually is... Uh, why do we have that? Well, because there are remedies that uh, are present and uh, parties try to exhaust the remedies, as you very well know. Uh, next click, please. Sige pa. And then, uh, if we do our job well, the idea is that we are, we are able to provide an enabling environment for foreign and local investments, which will, click, result in job creation and work opportunities. Click. <laughs> and which will which will improve our conditions of work as well as social protection. Uh, and it will lead to a fair and just relations between workers and employers, which will uh, lead to increased equality and reduction of poverty, decent work and jobs and rising incomes, inclusive and sustainable growth. That is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, that is uh, that is uh, DOLE and the socioeconomic agenda. Uh, is it an agenda that uh, is there only in this administration? In theory, no. Because our mandate hasn't changed. It has always been there. But uh, we try to improve. Uh, we try to, to improve uh, uh, as much as we can all the time with the participation, of course, of all stakeholders and all responsible actors in society. We will not, do this, we will not be able to do this alone. We do not create jobs. Uh, we, 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 we just facilitate uh, the creation of jobs. So that's where we are in the socioeconomic agenda. Uh, so that's, uh, I think, 10% uh, of my lecture done. Click this. Uh, let's talk about policy and legal developments, recent laws affecting labor. Uh, uh, I, I might have missed some of them. Uh, click, please. Uh, in the last five years, uh, there is a fairly recent law. I think last, ah, no, September, that was signed in September. We have what you call the pa Trabaho para sa Bayan Act, Republic Act 1196-2. Next. Uh, you have the Department of Migrant Workers Act, 1164, signed in 2021 and effective, uh, uh, fully effective since January 2023. You have the Labor Education Act of uh, 2021, uh, which could present an opportunity for the labor cluster to participate in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, to have a wider scope of uh, services. Uh, service charges, this is quite controversial. Uh, the uh, amendment of the Labor Code on service charges, Article 96. Uh, next, please. Uh, the Safe Spaces Act. Uh, and then, uh, we, call, we call this the Safe Spaces Act. I do not know why, why people call it Bawal Bastos Act. Parang nababastusan ako dun sa tawag na yan eh. Well, let's just call it Safe Spaces. <laughs> Uh, Occupational Safety and Health Act, that is uh, 2018, and then you have the Telecommuting Act of uh, uh, 2018 also, which was quite uh, providential in the sense that uh, uh, looking back, were well, it not for this uh, telecommuting law, perhaps we would have a more difficult time traversing the challenges during the pandemic. 
Uh, next, please. And farther down, you have the Anti-AIDS Discrimination and Employment Act 2015. And uh, the... Uh, uh, amendment of the Labor Code, strengthening conciliation and mediation and making conciliation and mediation mandatory in all labor cases. Uh, uh, those are some of the basic, uh, basic uh, laws that we have seen in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, last 10 years, last five particularly. Uh, not uh, really very dramatic changes, if you will, if you will note. Uh, there are no upheavals in our labor institutions. Yes, as there has been no upheavals in our labor institutions since uh, 1974. Uh, pareho pa naman since 1974 yung, ano, yung structure natin ng uh, labor. So what do this mean to us? Uh, there are administrative adjustments creating new structures or promoting certain preferred processes. Uh, next, please. So... The uh, one is, uh, the objective is to strengthen organizational focus and accountability, which is what you see when you, you have the creation of the Department of Migrant Workers uh, to focus on overseas labor migration. And then to promote policy coordination and efficiency. Uh, that is what you see when you have the trabajo law. Uh, yung trabajo law ay hindi naman nag-recreate ng trabajo yan. Uh, hindi din nag-recreate ng panibagong agencies. Hindi din nagdadagdag ng additional budget. What it sets up is a coordination mechanism among different agencies that would hopefully help our economy be able to optimize job opportunities or the creation of job opportunities. Whether it's going to succeed or not, or whether it is needed at all, we don't know. Let us see. The implementing rules are still being, are, are still being formulated. Next, please. And then to empower constituents, and I'm referring to the Labor Education Act. Next. But uh, the, uh, substantively, there has been a progressive recognition or strengthening of substantive rights. Uh, improving working conditions, for instance, uh, the occupational safety and health standards uh, of 2018. Uh, you have a you have a detailed set of standards now through legislation, and that is meant to improve working conditions. Uh, next, managing workplace transformations. That's what the Telecommuting Act does. Uh, and then recognizing, promoting, and protecting social and individual rights. So you have the uh, Safety Spaces Act, among other things. And uh, these are re reflective of an emerging uh, change in our society. You are seeing more and more individual people uh, asserting uh, their right to be respected. Uh, that's why you have the the, uh, the uh, Safe Spaces Act. And the other, the other implication there is that uh, you have a subtle shift in our conversation on labor relations and labor and employment relations. Uh, shift from the workplace, the place of work, and to the larger world of work. Uh, incidentally, there is a, there is a an ILO convention, Convention 190, uh, which deals with harassment and violence in the world of work, which was recently ratified by the President, and it's now pending concurrence in the Senate. And the challenge there, and maybe uh, the College of Law and the Law Center can take the lead in you know, shifting through the uh, nuances of the term world of work, how, what, how do you define world of work? And if you are part of that world, can you assert rights associated with work? And if you are going to do that, can you go to the NLRC to do that? Or to the Department of Labor? So those are, those are some things, some, 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 some ripe areas for uh, conversation and discourse down the road when we have this... Uh, 
this uh, this uh, uh, convention in place. Now, the, this, uh, this type of uh, social, I should call social awakening, an assertion of individual rights in social context, is not only true with respect to the workplace, but also in other, uh, in other universes, including the classrooms, for instance. Commissioner Ted Villanueva probably will recall how many, uh, cannot count how many times he was, uh, he was, uh, Ah, paano ba ito yung English? Ilang beses kami nura sa klase. Ngayon, hindi na ba pwede magmura eh, di ba, sa klase? <laughs> hindi, mo na, hindi, mo na, hindi mo na pwedeng tawagin yung and you should not do that at whatever generation. You can no longer call a student an orc. Di ba? Pero meron yata ang professor sa College of Law na ganun ang tawag sa estudyante. If that professor is listening, I think uh, he should rethink his vocabulary and, of course, good manners and right conduct. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, yun ang gusto natin. Uh, we, we, we want to promote a workplace that is respectful, not only of a fellow, as a fellow worker, but also as a human being. So, therefore, this, uh, this, uh, this trend about about uh, about shifting the conversation from the simply from the workplace to the world of work is parallel to the trend of uh, of uh, of strengthening the connection between labor rights and human rights yun ang yun ang ano niya pero sabi ka ni ni commissioner Ted kanina kung sasabihin ko talaga sa kongreso ito hindi maintindihan ni eh. <laughs> <laughs> Pero ganun yan, ganun yan. But I, I'd, I'd like you to take, to, to, to take that perspective na lumalawak yung ating conversation sa world of work, hindi na lang workplace. Next slide, please. So, what, uh, some points to note. Uh, the Department of Migrant Wo Workers, uh, as I've said earlier, takes care of lab labor migration and bilateral agreements. But uh, the DOLE is still is the authority on multilateral matters relating to international treaties and conventions. Next, uh, for practitioners, this is relevant. The settlement and resolution of labor disputes from employment of OFWs remain with DOLE attached agencies, in particular the National Labor Relations Commission and the Voluntary Arbitration Corps. Uh, wala namang napiktuhan dyan. Uh, next. And then, uh, uh, the uh, last point, probably, hindi naman ito brought about by the, uh, by the DMW Act, but there is a nagging problem involving seafarers, particularly those that concern ambulance chasing. Are you aware of this? Uh, if I were a seafarer, my contract is preterminated. I go home. The first person who will meet me is somebody who will introduce himself as somebody who can help me. Well, hindi pa niya alam ang problema ko, pero alam lang niya na bumalik ako, na pre-terminate contract ako. Uh, somebody who can help me. So the uh, gullible seafarer, and there are many of them, unfortunately, uh, will say, uh, you know, I was pre-terminated. O, oh, kaya natin yan. Kaya, kunan kita ng, ano, kunan kita ng uh, disability benefits. Okay? Bahala na ako dyan, package na. Kukunan kita ng, ano, ng medical certificate. Ilalakad ko yan sa voluntary arbitration o sa NLRC. Uh, tapos, wala kang gagastusin. Ang gagastusin mo lang ay... Uh, uh, 49% kung manalo tayo ay, ay uh, akin yan, yung award. Ganun yun, ang, ano nun, ang uh, 49%. Kasi sabi, sabi natin sa ethics, okay lang daw maningi lang mga abogado. Basta huwag mas mataas ang, sa nakuha ng, ano, no, ng, 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 ng kliyente. 
But as a matter of fact, mayroon pang gastos na iba. So, uh, those, uh, and, the, and the poor seafarer will end up, even if he has a really meritorious case, uh, getting about 30% of what he, what he, uh, what he uh, should have be, sh what he should have received under ordinary circumstances. So, yun ang, uh, yun ang mga problema natin. It's a syndicate. It's a syndicate that we are trying to resolve uh, uh, through administrative reforms. May, may binabago kami dyan sa proseso eh. Sana matapos namin sa first quarter of next year para makabalik ako dito sa Malcolm Hall at uh, babanggitin ko sa iyo kung anong nangyari. Next slide, please. But ambulance chasing is really a very, uh, very uh, big problem. It is the underbelly of labor practice. And uh, I hope that uh, for our students who are listening, I hope that uh, uh, when the time comes for you to be in practice, uh, you, will be able to, you will be able to help us all remove the, or eradicate this uh, pernicious uh, practice. Uh, mandatory conciliation and mediation for all cases. Uh, uh, that is what you call the single entry approach. Go ahead. Uh, there has been a high rate of disposition or settlement on request for assistance at the uh, Doles regional offices. Uh, pero uh, I, I, I'm looking at the statistics here. Uh, it's very helpful. But on the other hand, the, uh, the uh, some of the cases actually are not cases at all. They, they are just requests for information. And uh, tatanungin lang nila paano mag-compute ng minimum wage. So, anong applicable minimum wage? Eh, dapat hindi nyo dapat idakit yan na request for assistance. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just, it's not a case. It's just a request for information. So, continuing need to optimize the diagnostic and problem-solving aspects of CONMED. The, my favorite example here is... Uh, NLRC. Uh, ang arbiter daw, hindi daw marunong mag, ano, mag uh, conciliation and mediation. Kasi ang, uh, ano, ang nakapunta na ba kayo sa NLRC? Na, may mga taga-NLRC dito eh. Ganito yung, ganito yung itsura ng arbiter. <laughs> ganito sa, hmm. yeah, ganan. Ikaw ba employer? Ikaw ang employee. O anong claim mo? O settle ka na. <laughs> Di pa tinatanong kung anong problema nila. Pag may settlement na eh. But that is, uh, uh, I mentioned this example because I love NLRC. <laughs> uh, uh, my point is this. In law school, you never learn conciliation and mediation. And so, you, 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 uh, you have this uh, this uh, idea. Uh, you are you are predisposed to the idea that solution all solutions has to be based in the law. Uh, that is not really a totally wrong idea, but if you are doing conciliation and mediation, you ought to have a broader perspective. Hindi predetermined yung solution mo jani. Hindi predetermined. That's why you have to diagnose the problem. And then you have to help, help the parties solve the problem. You are a facilitator there rather than a decision maker or an adjudicator. Uh, so, yun ang ibig kong sabihin. Uh, yung ma, uh, by the way, we actually have a MOA with the UP College of Law, Dole and the UP, uh, UP College of Law and UP Law Center, where you can actually volunteer as a student interns uh, to be uh, seconded, do you call that seconded, or to be assigned at the Department of Labor uh, to uh, be engaged in the uh, processes of the Department of Labor. Eh, kung interesado kayo, di, di, uh, mag-enlist kayo dito sa programa. Huwag, ka, huwag lang kayo mag-enlist sa opisina ko kasi baka hindi kayo matutulog. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you will be welcome. You will be welcome. And there, there is that memorandum of agreement that we have. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you are most welcome. Next slide, please. Lower rate of settlement is observed at the arbitration stage. 
uh, and then uh, mainly in uh, and that's because the uh, cases that we uh, that reach the arbitration stage mainly involves rights disputes. Yung rights disputes kasi nandiyan na yung solusyon sa batas eh. Pero yung mahirap i-conciliate ito o i-mediate. Nandiyan na eh. Given na yung solution. O kaya basic labor standard yan. Paano, naman, paano mo naman i-mediate yan eh? Kung 500 pesos a day ang minimum wage, tapos ang claim niya, non-payment for 10 days, 5,000. Alangan namang i-mediate mo yun so that he will accept 4,000. Nasa batas na yung kanyang karapatan eh. So you shouldn't use that uh, process to undermine or to diminish the right of, or the entitlement of the claimant. Uh, walang masyadong experience sa Safety Spaces Act and Anti-Discrimination Act dito sa conciliation and mediation. Uh, we do hope to, we do expect that we are going to, we will be able to build some at least some case studies there, uh, so that uh, this can serve as learning cases for all of us. Uh, by the way, hindi yan aakyat sa Supreme Court, kaya hindi natin nababasa sa law school yung mga examples ng conciliation and mediation. There is uh, a nagging concern that mandatory conciliation and mediation is duplicitous, meaning to say, pumasok na sa Department of Labor Regional Office hindi na sold doon, pupunta sa NLRC, mag-mediate na naman. Mag-conciliate na naman. So, bakit, bakit? Akala ko ba gusto natin mas mabilis, lalo lang tumatagal. So, there is that issue. What is the policy of the uh, DOLE on this? Next, please. Our policy is this. Conciliation anywhere does not preclude subsequent conciliation elsewhere. Conciliation nga eh. But settlement anywhere should be binding everywhere. Yan yung dapat ang ano. Ang, yan yung policy ng, ng dole dyan. Hindi mo naman talaga mapipigilan yung parties kung gusto nilang mag-usap. At any stage, even at the level of appeal, if they want to, uh, to, uh, to talk and they ask your facilitation, then you, do, you, should, you should afford them that kind of service. It's expected in labor dispute resolution professionals to do that at whatever stage. Even in the judiciary, you do that. Okay. Next, please. OSH Act. Uh, as I've said earlier, it elevates OSH from executive issuance to legislation. It creates new rights. Uh, my new, the right to know. The right to refuse unsafe work. The right to report accidents, the right to, uh, to personal protective equipment, PPEs, the right to be paid in case of work stoppage due to hazards. Yeah, nandiyan lahat sa batas yan. These are new rights uh, na nakasulat na sa, sa batas. Uh, confers new duties on the employer to create a work environment free from hazardous conditions to provide safety officers, to have an OSH plan, and to provide OSH trainings. Next. And authorizes DOLE to develop core OSHs for micro and small enterprises. Hindi pa natatapos ng DOLE ito. De-develop pa lang. Next. Imposes penalties for willful violations. Up to 100,000 pesos fine a day. A day. Yes. Kaya makinig kayo. Baka mag magka magkakaroon kayo ng kliyente na ganito. Eh. Every day pala na 100,000 yan. Kung, uh, every day is a violation. If there is a, if there is an, a, if there is a violation of OS8 that, uh, that, uh, that uh, presents an imminent danger and you do not comply with the directive to abate that danger, then, every day that you do not comply, a fine can be imposed. Hindi naman 100,000 lahat, pero every day eh. Every day. Eh kung naka 10 days ka yan, di isang million na yon. But let's talk about willful violations later on. 
Ano, kasi importante yan sa, sa inyo. Uh, OS, uh, OSHS is now a part of the ILO's International Labor Organization Core or Fundamental Conventions. Uh, yung dati, walo lang yan eh. Yung uh, forced labor and, and uh, slave, uh, forced labor and prison labor, uh, child labor na dalawang conventions, tapos non-discrimination na dalawang conventions at freedom of association na dalawa. Ngayon, may dalawang nadagdag yung OSHS convention. Uh, so what you are seeing here is that there is a, re a renewed, renewed uh, attention being given to occupational safety and health standards, which I would suspect is not something that you find very, very attractive in, in your discussions sa klase. Diba? Boring naman ito. Pero... Pag nakakita kayo ng 100,000, tignan natin kung tignan natin kung mabubor pa kayo niyan. Uh, so what are willful violations? Uh, some points to note, what is willful? Uh, this is how we look at it. How do you establish willful? Uh, there has, first, you have to establish knowledge. Yun bang, uh, yun bang uh, respondent ay my knowledge. Okay. Actual? o kaya constructive knowledge. Uh, ang ina-apply natin dito sa employers kasi, hindi lang actual knowledge, eh, pati constructive knowledge. Because supposed to be, if you are an employer, uh, you, should, uh, you are presumed to know the employer rights and obligations. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. And then the second aspect is due notice and directive to act or not to act. So nakita ko yung violation, uh, I, I presume that you have knowledge, I direct you to stop it or to do something about it. Okay, good. And then, you did not act or you act in a contrary manner, acting or not acting without substantial reasonable ground or refusing or ignoring an order to comply. If these conditions are met, I'm going to start imposing upon you, upon you a fine of 100,000 a day. Kaya sa, from the point of view of practice, labor practitioners, for instance, anong ilalagay nyo kung kayo ay uh, nanghihingi sa regional director o secretary of labor na i-impose yung fine? Ito ang ilalagay nyo. Kung ikaw naman ay employer, ay ito ang i-refute mo. Okay? Uh, so, klaro tayo dun, ha? This will, this will not come out in the bar exams. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, telecommuting Act, applicable only when there is an employer-employee relationship. Of course, uh, this is very important because it assimilates technological advance to governance of employment relations, particularly on working conditions. Uh, it does not change the application of basic general labor standards and occupational safety and health standards. Uh, it is to emphasize an alternative arrangement that is voluntary and time-bound. Uh, uh, may automatic na six-month provision dun sa implementing rules. Eh. It is effective for six months. Kung hindi na rin nyo, uh, balik kayo sa dati. Uh, why is that the case? Para hindi na kayo mag-away. Para hindi na kayo mag-away. I-re-renew ba natin o hindi natin i-re-renew? Eh kung hindi nyo na-renew uh, after six months, balik sa dati. Uh, the key concept that is introduced by the implementing rules is this definition. Any location where work through the use of telecommunication and or computer technology is performed at a location away from the principal place of business of the employer, including but not limited to the employee's residence, co-working spaces, or other spaces that allow for mobile working. So work from home, work from, work away from home. Uh, ito, yung mga, ito yung definition niya. Uh, in other words, what is the implication of this? Uh, if you look at book three of the labor code, working conditions, now, the premise there is you have a physical workplace. Uh, you have a physical workplace that is controlled by the employer. 
And it is easy to control you because you are there. But here, you no longer have that physical workplace. So the difficulty here is if you remove the assumption of a physical workplace, how are you go, uh, would you still apply the same labor standards the same way? Uh, that, is the, that, is the, uh, that is the challenge for, uh, not only for, if, for uh, administrators, but also most especially for the employers and the workers themselves. Right. So some points, uh, scheduling of hours work and arrangements regarding shift and break schedules. Ito yung mga problema natin kung work from away from home. Eh. Uh, away from uh, work, uh, alternative work arrangements. Eh. Work from home or work from anywhere, as they say. Amount of hours work, such as part-time work and job shares. Go ahead. Place of work. Uh, work from home, satellite location, work from anywhere arrangements. Uh, what are the policy implications there? Do you need the consent of the employees concerned to, to uh, uh, introduce alternative work arrangements? Under current law and uh, guidelines, you need that consent. Uh, next. Do you need regulatory approval from the Department of Labor before you can implement this type of flexible arrangements? The answer is no. You need only to report. Once you have reported, you can implement. You don't have to wait for the Department of Labor to approve the work from home arrangement. Nga lang, eh, wala pala eh. Hindi pala kailangan. Hindi na lang ako mag-submit. Ay, kwidaw ka doon. Kung na-inspect ka, Wala kang may papakita, kaya mag-submit na lang kayo isang papel lang naman yan. Uh, time rated to output-based compensation. Dahil mahirap nang i-monitor, will this herald a shift from time rated pay, meaning daily, monthly, to piece rated pay? Tignan natin kung yan nga ang mangyayari. Next. Control and supervision is very, uh, is uh, sometimes problematic dahil uh, Wala sa line of sight mo yung, ano, yung, yung, uh, yung tao. Uh, occupational safety and health standards. Uh, what is, what, uh, how could you impose uh, occupational safety and health standards in a person's home? Or uh, if the person is uh, working from anywhere like uh, Starbucks, uh, uh, paano mo... Eh, Ang uh, labor standards kaya ay separate facilities for men and women, di ba? Eh, yung Starbucks, hindi eh. Di ba? <laughs> eh, pa 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 paano mo impose yung separate facilities dyan? Oh, go ahead. The right to disconnect. Uh, I'm, uh, this is one of the emerging debates. Ano? The right to disconnect. Uh, si Busing, tawag ng tawag o text ng text kahit alas unse na ng gabi. O, di ba? Eh, pwede bang hindi ko sagutin si Busing? <laughs> o, di ba? <laughs> sa, ano, sa private sector, issue ito. Pero kami sa gobyerno, ay mga slaves kami. We are different. Uh, we are a different. We are a lower type of slaves. So, wala kami niyan. <laughs> Go ahead. Performance management system, you'll have to adjust that. And then, ito yung maganda. Sa bahay ako nag opisina eh. Bakit hindi mo irentahan yung aking ginagamit? Ha, diba? And this is actually an issue in Europe. The two. Uh, the two, the two, the two the, this two. The right to disconnect and compensation for work premises. Is it an issue now? Well, you'll never know. May mga nakakabanggit na ito na labor sector eh. So, you'll never know. Uh, maybe it will, it will be uh, it will be a uh, it will be coming soon. Go ahead. So, 30% uh, uh, na, ano, uh, Commissioner Ted. Uh, let us now shift to another topic. Uh, ba yun ang mga bagong batas, uh, just to give you a flavor of, of the new things. Uh, what are the old laws? Pero parang nagbabago ang applications. Uh, the uh, one that has been subject of of uh, profound changes is the exercise of the visitorial and enforcement power under Article 128 of the Labor Code. Uh, or you call this the inspection power. 
Uh, the inspection power is uh, the power vested in the Secretary of Labor or his or her duly authorized representatives uh, to investigate any fact, condition, or matter which may be necessarily to determine violations or which may aid in the enforcement of the provisions of this code and of any labor law, wage order, or rules and regulations issued pursuant thereto. So, malawak, hindi lang working hours ang tinitignan kasi uh, provisions of this code, pati security of tenure provisions yan, kasama yan. Uh, and wage orders, rules and regulations issued pursuant thereto. Uh, but it also performs a more proactive, educative function uh, because uh, in inspection, you also have the opportunity to inform both workers and employers of their rights and obligations. Kung masetil mo doon, uy, wala kang, yung ano, yung fire, saan bang fire extinguisher dito? I-inspect ko nga itong... <laughs> Walang fire extinguisher dito, ha? Violation yan. <laughs> Professor Batad, ayan. Knowledge, meron. Di ba? Presumed knowledge eh. <laughs> meron siya. <laughs> Tapos, directive to act. You act uh, within how many days? Merong remediation period na tinatawag eh. Pero itong uh, remediation period sa mga ganitong klaseng minor violations, dapat immediately. Mag-provide ka na ng fire extinguisher. Kaya bukas, Professor Batad, kung pumunta ko dito at wala pang fire extinguisher, 40,000 a day ang iyong fine. <laughs> Yan. Uh, yan ang ano, ang, uh, yan ang uh, magandang activity sa klase. Pa-inspect nyo itong college of law. Baka, <laughs> baka merong violations dito. Ano? <laughs> diba sabihin ko kay din May violation ka, 40,000 a day. Ah, ito, hazardous ito. 100,000 a day yan. <laughs> anyway, uh, may depensa siya eh. Uh, UP is a public institution. <laughs> Punta ka sa LGU, hindi, hindi ako pupunta. Alam niyo, yung mga establishments na hindi nakaka-comply ng fire extinguisher, kung minsan nahihirapan, lalo na yung maliliit. Uh, alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi ang fire extinguisher na kailangan mong gamitin daw ay dapat galing sa Bureau of Fire Protection ng LGU. Negosyo nila yun. Ano yan? Kung hindi ka doon bumili, ay hindi ka compliant. Uh, I don't know how, you, how the College of Law can help uh, uh, small enterprises uh, comply. Ano? <laughs> hindi daw sila compliant kung hindi yung specific fire extinguisher ang binibili nila. Ang binibili nila. But in any case, uh, uh, <laughs> next, uh, uh, ah, can you go back, please? Uh, Dole has recently reintroduced the technical assistance visits in its in strategic inspection program. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Lalo na sa micro and small enterprises. Alam naman natin, hindi nila alam ang kanilang kinakailangang i-provide sa workers nila. Uh, o baka hindi sila aware yung mga safety uh, safety requirements ng isang workplace, kesa naman patawan mo yan ng 40,000 a day na fine, ay sabihan mo muna. <laughs> Tulungan mo muna ganito ang dapat mong gawin para makapag-comply ka. And you give them a period to comply. That's technical assistance visits. So we do not use the strong arm of the state uh, because of the circumstances of those uh, of those uh, of those uh, establishment. Kaya lagi kaming tinatanong sa kongreso, bakit walang napapakulong sa underpayment o sa 13th month pay, non-payment ng 13th month pay? Gusto ko may makulong. Yan. Hindi naman namin masabi, honorable senator, kung ipakulong namin yung employer, wala nang magbabayad. O, diba? Pero yun naman talaga ang rason kung bakit reluctant ang Department of Labor na mag 
prosecute ng kaso eh. Sinong magbabayad sa manggagawa na nag-claim ng non-payment kung pinakulong mo yung tao? Uh, so sometimes, the solutions are not in the law, no? It's really common sense. Yan. <laughs> okay. So what does it include? Uh, you know, the visitorial and enforcement power is the most coercive power of the Department of Labor and Employment. Uh, you can have access to employers' records and premises. Uh, by the way, at any time of the day or night, whenever work is being done, pwede kang pumasok. Problema mo nga lang, work from home pala siya. <laughs> doon, na naman ang, doon na naman ang ating uh, problema. How do you transition uh, sa, uh, this type of, uh, of, uh, of power to, or adapt this type of power to, to remote working arrangements? Investigate any fact or condition, order compliance, stop work or suspend operations based on imminent danger to the health and safety of workers, that Enforce, including issuance of writs of execution. So, ito yung power ng Secretary of Labor. There is actually an interagency uh, committee against, uh, against uh, child labor. Maraming uh, agencies ang involved dyan. Uh, nandyan yung DOJ, nandyan yung PNP, nandyan yung DOLE. Alam nyo kung anong value ng DOLE doon. Kung ikaw ay mag, mag kung yung uh, interagency committee na yan ay nako matagal pa ako. Uh, yung interagency committee na yan ay uh, ay uh, uh, pupunta sa isang bar to find out hindi ko makita yung plinaplas mo no. Uh, pupunta sa isang bar or video ke bar to find out if there are child laborers there. You will need to get a warrant, di ba? Uh, from the court. But if you have a Department of Labor representative there, you don't need a warrant. That's how coercive it is. Kaya matakot na kayo <laughs> sa, sa inspector. Uh, hindi mo hahanapan yan kasi this is in aid of, in aid of uh, determining violations or enforcing labor laws against child labor. Go ahead. Scope of inspection has broadened. Protection against improper use of contracting or subcontracting. Protection against termination of employment. And uh, next, protection against miscategorization. Tinitignan na rin ito ng uh, inspector, uh, particularly with the issuance of Department Order 174, itong uh, uh, rules on contracting and subcontracting. Uh, inspector na ang gumagawa niyan. But uh, uh, this was issued in 2017. Ang preference ng previous administration ay ano eh, uh, strong power, uh, strong, strong use of the power. Ano? But we are trying to review that and see how it can, uh, how we can regulate without, uh, without, without uh, uh, negating the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ability of enterprises to generate more jobs. So kailangan magbalanse yan. Go ahead. Uh, so, ganito na ang scope of inspection ngayon. Always, there is that question of employee-employer relationship na i-determine niya. Dati, ang uh, inspection ay general labor standards at occupational safety standards lang. Pero ngayon, ay napasok na yung security of tenure uh, and also the issue of categories of employment and uh, whether the employees ought to be ordered to be regularized or not. So, lumaki yung scope ng inspection. As I've said, the, uh, uh, we are trying to review the capacity of the inspectorate to really perform this function. Ito, ito yun. Uh, kaya ba nilang i-perform talaga yan o ibato na lang natin sa NLRC yan? Uh, okay, precondition, exercise, must, uh, the ERE employee relationship must actually exist. Go ahead. Ano na ito? Medyo, medyo technical na ito. Eh, ano na natin? Eh, kasi pinapaalis na ako dito sa stage. Eh. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, ganito na ngayon. Ano? Merong, uh, merong gray areas dito. 
uh, ang inspection during uh, provided the employer employee relationship is still exists gagawin niyan ng dole uh, lalong lalo na kung uh, these are these uh, these cases involve matters that are verifiable in the normal course of inspection kung hindi naman immediately verifiable uh, pwede pa rin uh, but uh, the if upon hearing the uh, regional office will consider that uh, uh, the issues to be resolved need to be heard in uh, a full blown proceeding ay ibabato na niya dapat sa NLRC yan so this gray area ito ang pagpapraktisan ng department of labor dito Uh, dapat yung mga nasa baba, mga inspectors as well as the healing officers should be very, very uh, competent to determine kung ano yung pwedeng ibato at ano ang pwede pang i-exercise ng Secretary of Labor. Uh, Mag-iingat kayo dyan kasi mga practitioners, yan ang laging binabantayan. Paano ba tayo makalusot dyan? Paano ba tayo maka makarami o makalusot? Either way. Depende kung sino mo nire-represent mo. Go ahead, please. Practical applications and issues. Working time and wages is still the most common issue. Ito yung paborito kong example. This is a composite uh, problem. Uh, si SCTEX Corporation is a company with 24 by 7 operations and a six-day work week. Its employees work in three regular shifts. First shift, 6 a.m. to... Uh, Uh, 2 p.m., the second shift, 2 to 10, and then 10 to 6. Go ahead. Jane is a rank and file daily paid in SCTEX. Her basic daily wage is 640. Her regular shift is the third shift. At 10 p.m. on April 8, went to work for her regular shift. She was to complete her shift at 6 a.m. April 9, which was Araw ng Kagitingan and a Monday Thursday. April 9 was also Jane's regular rest day. Prior to the end of her regular shift, Jane was informed by her supervisor that there were several absentees in the night shift. In order to meet the production quota for the night shift, Jane's supervisor required her to continue working beyond her regular shift. Jane complied. She eventually logged off from work 9 a.m. April 9. Next. How much in all did Jane earn? Diyan kayo ba mababagsak sa labor law. No? <laughs> This is a composite problem. Uh, uh, hindi ko na sasabihin yung sagot but this, are the, this in, in, incorporates the most common uh, problems that we encounter day to day. Uh, yan. Hindi ko na pa. Uh, yung makakasolve ito, Ano ito eh, ang instruction kung exam ito, uh, state the basis and then, uh, and then state yung basis mo sa formula mo. Ano? Eh, kung mali yung formula mo, ay walang point yun. Uh, so, uh, maraming basis dito, maraming provisions ng labor code ang gagamitin mo dito. But anyway, flavor lang ito. Uh, yung uh, wage issues, kasama na rin dyan, Kung ano yung wages. Uh, is there anyone here from Region 6? Region 6? Uh, wala. Region 6. How about uh, Region uh, uh, Region uh, 12? Yan. Uh, sa Region 3, pero mechanized ng Region 3, hindi na sila gumagamit ng kalabaw. Uh, maraming plantations dyan, lalo na sa hacienda ng mga tubo. Diyan sa mga regions na yan. Uh, alam nyo ba na meron tayong tinatawag na sa wage determination, may carabao share? Carabao share. Ngayon yung nag narinig, ano? <laughs> Ayan. Yung si carabao, ganito yun eh. Kung meron kang palilinis o pa, pa-harvest na particular area, sa isang sugar cane worker, uh, peace rate yun. Babayaran mo siya ng, let's say, 1,000 for that area. Ano? Pero gagamit siya ng sarili niyang kalabaw. Dapat bayaran mo din yung kalabaw. May renta siya. 
So halimbawa 100 ang renta mo sa peace rate ano, di 1100 dapat ang ibayad mo. Pero yung 100 hindi mo ibayad sa kalabaw. Bayad mo sa ibayad mo sa may-ari ng kalabaw. That's the kalabaw share. Uh, so in in those regions that I mentioned, typically you see cases that are being filed about non-payment of the karabaw. Ganun ang, ganun ang, ano nun eh, ang, ang, uh, ang complaint ng mga pinapail dyan, non-payment of the karabaw. Ano? That's the karabaw share. Okay? So, marami tayong istoryahan dyan. Kung ano. uh, pero, kung merong makasagot ng tama yung aking uh, composite problem, ay magtatap kayo ng bar. <laughs> good, good. Go ahead, go ahead. Service charges. Under the law, ito, ha? This is one of the things that we are looking at. Kasi yung batas, ang sabi niya, na amin na yan eh. Dati ay merong 85%, 15% share ang, ano, ang, uh, ang uh, rank and file at managerial employees dyan. 15% to the managerial employees. Pero, sa ngayon ay, uh, uh, sa ano na lang, sa excluded na yung managerial employees. Pero, Kung tumatanggap ka kaya dati, nung 15%, ay uh, pwede bang tanggalin yon? Sabi ng batas, nothing in this act shall be construed to diminish existing benefits under present laws, etc., etc. Look at the, uh, look at the uh, Department of Labor's uh, implementing rules. Covered employees refer to all employees except managerial employees as defined herein under the direct employee of the covered establishment. Meron siyang qualification eh, under the direct employee. Ibig sabihin kung yung waiter ay provide ng service provider, a contractor, and not by the hotel itself, hindi siya under the direct employee. Ano? So hindi siya kasama dito. Under this rule. Question. Is that compatible with the law? Wala namang qualification sa batas. Eh bakit? Eh yung contractor, contractor's employee naman siyang nagserve eh. Bakit wala siyang share? <laughs> diba? So that is one thing that we are reviewing. And uh, all comments, especially from the academe, is welcome. Go ahead. Go ahead. Assumption of jurisdiction. Paborito natin yan. Ano? Uh, teka, teka, teka. Sandali lang, sandali lang. Masyado <laughs> kang nagmamadali. Ito yung Article 278G. 263G dati yan, bago na number. Sabi ng batas, when in his opinion, there exists a labor dispute causing or likely to cause a strike or lockout in an industry indispensable to the national interest, uh, The secretary may assume jurisdiction over the dispute or certify the same to the commission. Wala palang interest dito. National interest. No? Uh, so, ano ang pwede mong i-assume jurisdiction niya na, na, na establishment? Depende sa discretion ng secretary of labor. No? Diba? Pero hindi naman na tayo nakakakita yung situation na ang secretary of labor nag a siya ng jurisdiction over a labor dispute involving a patis factory. Nung araw, patis, mamunlok, yan, ina-assume yan, eh. national interest daw yun. Ha? Kasi mahilig daw tayo sa patis, o mahilig daw tayo sa, sa mami, kaya ina-assume nung araw. Hindi na nag a ang Department of Labor. Yan. Uh, there was a time, nag a din ang Department of Labor ng isang isang uh, nagmaman ng ano ng uh, I'm uh, sure you are familiar with the company called Triumph International. Yan. Familiar kayo noon ano? Ayan. Inassume ng Secretary of Labor yan noon. Ah. Bakit ano naman ang national interest doon ano? <laughs> Di ba? Ah, hindi ganito daw kasi malaki ang kanyang contribution sa exports. Yan, ayan, ayan. National interest. Alam nyo naman siguro yung Holy Cross Memorial Park. Nag, ano, nag, uh, nag-strike yung mga administrative employees nila sa Makati. Tapos nung hindi na nila ma, 
sustain yung strike, nagmamakaawa na sa Department of Labor para i-assume jurisdiction ng Secretary of Labor. Ayaw! I-assume. Mat mat matitinik itong mga empleyado na ito. Ginawa nila, kinausap nila yung mga grave diggers sa bagbag na independent contractors yun, hindi empleyado. And the grave diggers uh, sympathize with them and they withheld their work. Ayaw nang maglibing. Kaya, nakapila na yung mga ililibing sa Holy Cross. So much so that uh, the uh, company became aware of it, uh, the, the community became aware of it, and it was the community which petitioned the Secretary of Labor to assume jurisdiction over the dispute on the ground of public health. So we assume jurisdiction. <laughs> but uh, things like that were so to be clarified. Next, uh, click please. Were so to be clarified by this rule of uh, the DOLE in, uh, I think, in 2016. Ito lang daw ang pwedeng mag-assume kung uh, mag-request ang parties o kaya magkaroon ng conference ng Secretary of Labor. At saka dito lang. Ang industry is indispensable to the national interest. Hospital, electric power, water supply, air con traffic control, such other industries as may be recommended by the National Tripartite Industrial Peace Council, and it has recommended any other addition. Uh, so, yan na yan. Kaya na, hindi ka maka-assume kung uh, labas dito. So, the, the law says... Uh, in all types of establishments, you can assume. It's possible to assume. But here, it's no longer possible. So how do we implement it now? Next. Without a request from the parties or without holding a conference, may the secretary assume or certify if the employer involved is a hotel. Hindi na, no? Hindi na? A manufacturer of tires for export. A private economic zone administrator, pwede, pwede pa ba? Mukhang sabi nito, posible. Sabi nito, hindi posible kasi hindi sila pasok eh. Ha? So pwede pa ba? Uh, recently, we assumed jurisdiction over a hotel. Uh, and uh, that, wa that is stemmed from a notice of a strike first accompanied by a notice of blackout by the employer. And there was a threat of a mass layoff. So therefore, what we invoke is not only 278G, but also another provision of the Labor Code, 292, which tells us that, uh, that uh, whenever the, the labor dispute may result in, uh, is, is in implementation of a mass layoff, the, sec uh, the, sec the Secretary of Labor may suspend the effects of termination to protect the security of tenure of the workers. And we assume on that basis. Okay, okay ba? Uh, manufacturer of tires for export. Gulong lang naman yan. Ano naman national interest yan? Ha? Export oriented. Hindi na, na tayo pinapa hindi na tayo naniniwala yan. Itong kumpanya na ito, ang daming issue, ang daming Kaso, may kaso sa NLRC, may kaso sa BLR, cancellation of union registration, may kaso sa representation, may kaso sa NCMB notice of strike. Tapos may kaso sa office of the secretary. We assume jurisdiction because there is no other way to resolve the fragmented issues pending in various agencies except for us to exercise the power. Public policy reasons, because the public policy is uh, uh, is uh, frowns upon fragmentation and multiplicity of suits, iba, yan. A private economic zone administrator, ikahon eh, uh, na sabi ng Supreme Court, pwede yan. Uh, so. That's also what we did. And in fact, these were the three assumption cases that we've had since July 2022. So, what, what are we saying? Uh, is assumption outside of, of uh, this enumerated in the middle uh, possible? The law says it is possible. The rule says it's not possible. Current practice says it is not impossible. Right.
Go ahead. No. Okay. Kaya kung gusto niyong mag-intern uh, sa amin, pwede din naman. At uh, para yan ang mga makikita niyong, uh, makikita niyong kaso. So, nagkakaproblema tayo sa application of settlements. Uh, pero, uh, okay na yan. Uh, mababasan niyo na sa libro yan. Go ahead. Next. Ito yung targeted areas for reforms, general direction, the key considerations are simplicity is of access, efficiency, accountability, effectiveness, adaptation of new technology, specific areas. Kaya gusto namin mag-online proceedings sana sa NLRC at saka sa conciliation mediation. Pero I have some reservations about uh, conciliating negotiations. Kasi yung negotiations, meron kayong pinapag-agrihan na negotiating panel. Pero kung naka-online ka, hindi mo na alam kung sino pang pa kasama doon. ba? Diba? Uh, baka hindi nagpapakita eh. Sa isa, isang daan pala sila doon nakasama. Eh, yung negotiation kasi, these are, these are processes of confidential character. You cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, uh, disclose the results of ongoing negotiations. That's part of uh, uh, bargaining in good faith. Uh, kung, uh, kung ganun, hindi mo ma-safeguard yung confidentiality of the negotiations. Eh. The specific areas, we, we will be reviewing the uh, rules on contracting on sub and subcontracting. Uh, kasi parang yung 174 ay hindi naman niya nililimit, ini-incentivize yata ang maging contractors. Uh, union representation, Uh, it's very, very litigious uh, and uh, we should not lose sight of the objective that the idea of determining re repre union representation is only a step toward collective bargaining. Dapat ang policy objective ng batas ay to facilitate bargaining. Go ahead. Fragmentation and multiplicity of cases, uh, continuing professionalization of VAs, sige ba? and execution of orders or judgments, monetary and non-monetary. Ito yung mga areas na nire-review namin ngayon. To the extent of the administrative rulemaking powers of the Secretary of Labor. Kung legislation naman yan, ay uh, bahala na sila sa Kongreso niyan. Transformation, uh, let me just take uh, five minutes. You have transformations in the world of work now. The change drivers, artificial industry 4.0, 5.0, artificial intelligence, public policy and governance challenges, uh, including yung LGBTQ halimbawa, uh, how, do you, how do you assimilate them sa, ano, sa ating governance, uh, governance uh, uh, systems. Uh, maraming mga employers nagpapadisclose ng maraming bagay in the in the uh, in the name of uh, in the name of uh, of uh, protecting their interests pero when do we when do we draw the line between human security and the right to privacy that's also one one uh, one area etong externalities and osh uh, kagagaling lang natin sa pandemic how do we learn the lessons of the pandemic and try to incorporate this uh, in our systems. Marami, maraming, maraming norms. Uh, ito ba covered lahat ng labor code? Hindi. Yun nga ang problema natin eh. Uh, hindi lahat, so we will have to evolve the norms. Go ahead. Uh, sige, uh, let's skip this. Uh, just to say roles and institutions matter, whatever the changes. Go ahead. Ito yung fundamental principles na kailangan natin i-promote always sa labor. Uh, meron kang checklist, uh, social accountability is standards ang tawag nila niyan. Uh, it consists of eight standards. Kaya nga SA8000 SA ang tawag nila dito eh, sa mga nag-audit. Social accountability 8000. There are eight standards. And these are reflective of the core conventions of the ILO. Go ahead. Uh, there is a growing, uh, uh, of course, we all know this, labor is a derived demand. If, uh, if there is no demand for products, there is no demand for labor. 
Uh, and uh, uh, this time we are seeing a stronger linkage again between labor rights and trade. Uh, so much so that if a country does not guarantee or does not ensure the observance of basic labor rights, its access to trade markets might be restricted. So, yun, nakatali yun. Ha? May child labor ka, may union repression ka, ay ayaw namin kang bigyan ng, ano, ng trade preferences. Go ahead. So, imp compliance is very, very important. And we go by what we have, meaning to say what are in the labor law. And also, even if they are not in the labor law, but they are in international conventions that are, uh, or treaties that have been ratified by the Philippines or to which the Philippines is a party, they will still matter. They will still matter even if we do not have laws for them. So, ang basic standard natin, yung nasa batas natin, ay ang compliance dyan ay state-driven, usually through labor inspection. Meron namang mga kumpanya na voluntary, they are really mindful of complying with their obligations, and that is very good. And then there is market-driven compliance through the production and supply, ch supply chain. Ito yung sinasabi ko, yung trade access mo malilimit kung... kung uh, hindi ka nagko-comply sa labor standards. So it's really very, very important na i-connect natin yung, yung compliance with labor standards with, with uh, the ability of the company concerned to sell its products, especially to export markets. Right. E yung GSP plus, yung general system of preferences yun sa trade. You know? Go ahead. The, uh, uh, what are the basic questions? Uh, well, of course, the... Uh, Essential question is still the existence of an employer-employee relationship. Araw-araw yata inaaral nyo ito for full test. Uh, so, hindi na natin, uh, na natin uh, pag-usapan masyado yan. Ito nga lang, ang banggitin ko, yung mahirap mag-prove ng employer-employee uh, relationship, lalong-lalo uh, na dun sa maliliit na establishments. Kasi kung minsan ang Supreme Court ang hinahanap niyang proof, nasaan ang employment contract mo? Nasaan ang payroll mo? Nasaan ang ID mo? Wala ka man lang ma-produce. Eh, pahinante lang po ako. Pinulot lang ako kung saan-saan eh. Wala namang ID yung mga yun eh. So how could they prove? You have a case, for instance, like uh, Fly Ace versus Javier. I do not know if you are, you are familiar with that case. Yung, pahinenta, yung pahinante, di ba? Pahinante ito eh. Uh, Nainlove yata, yun ang istorya. <laughs> Nainlove yata sa anak nung kanyang busing. Ano? Ang, uh, ang, ang, ano dyan, ang situation is, uh, nandiyan lang siya, tinawag siya, tapos uh, pinasama dyan sa delivery truck. And he did that for a number of days. Tapos, uh, ang, uh, ang uh, nangyari after so many days ay hindi na siya, uh, hindi na siya pinagtrabaho. Kaya nag-file siya ng complaint for illegal dismissal sa NLRC. Eh, hindi ko na alam, hindi ko na babanggitin kung anong sinabi ng NLRC. Basta ang sabi ng Supreme Court, walang employer-employee relationship dyan. Dahil hindi niya na-prove na empleyado siya. Wala siyang kontrata, wala siyang payroll. Uh, wala man lang siyang dokumento to prove that he is an employee. But how would you expect the pahinante to solve, to, 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 to present those, uh, ano? Alam niya, meron akong crazy idea dyan. If I were the, given the facts of the case, and if I were the one to have decided, I would have, I would have concluded that there was an employee-employer relationship, but it was a casual employment relationship. Pero Supreme Court na yun, eh. kaya pabayaan na natin ng Supreme Court. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, saka na ito. Saka na ito. Uh, at lang, so, uh, ganito pa rin ang ating test. Uh, the economic reality test and the fourfold test are still things that we are using. Uh, and I think you are very much aware of, those, uh, of these principles. Uh, Kung hindi daw kayo makakasagot kung ano yung control test, fourfold test, at economic reality test, ay 
kuwakwatluhin daw kayo ni Professor Batad, eh si Professor Daway meron pang dagdag. Ano yung multi-factor test? Ay, hindi natin lang ginagamit sa Pilipinas yan, pero sa, pareho yan sa economic reality test. Uh, yun ang ginagamit nila sa ibang bansa. Uh, so, uh, you all know this already, and uh, for those who are going to, uh, for purposes of uh, the students who are going to take the bar examinations, ay uh, talagang kailangan na sa knowledge set nyo na yan. Uh, so, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, ILO Recommendation 198, that is a guide post that is provided by International Labor Law. Ang uh, primary purpose niyan is to combat this guy's employment relationships. Uh, kasi ang lumalabas ay may mga, may mga work relationships that are not employment relationships. Uh, independent contracting, freelancing, etc. At gustong, gusto nitong recommendation na ito ay i-preserve yung area of protected rights that are made available to employees. Okay, uh, go ahead. Pareho din lang, tignan nyo, ha? It has two categories. Control and subordination, how the work is carried out. Sa Pareho din lang sa atin, ano? Uh, second, nature of the economic relationship is their economic dependency. That is what the two-tiered test is all about, di ba? So, basically, we are very much aligned with the convention. Uh, the details, uh, just, can you just flash the details? Sige lang, yan. Pareho lang, tignan nyo na lang na, ng mabilis. Pareho lang sa economic reality test natin. Sa California yata, 21 yan eh. Sa state of California. Pero essentially, it's the same ng ano na, nakikita natin. Go ahead. Sige, uh, okay na yan. At, ano, at, uh, tutay, bibigay ko naman ito kung hindi ko makalimutan. <laughs> so, this is... Uh, now, uh, ang pinapag-usapan natin ay always, when we talk about the application of labor laws, the first threshold question is whether or not there exists an employer-employee relationship. But must it always be the case in order for us to intervene or to mediate Kagaya nito, you have a requester. Ito isa-isa lang, ha? click. And then, you have an online intermediary. And uh, this online intermediary pulls workers, provides guidelines, and collects requests from the buyer. Click. So what is the contract? Is there a contract? Next. Uh, yung online intermediary, there will be, next, there will be a worker at the end of the online intermediation. And is this worker, or does this worker have, have the autonomy to accept the request? Uh, does the worker own the assets to deliver the request? And does it own the capital to perform the work? Next, please. And between him and the uh, online intermediary, is there labor control? Meaning, as to the means and methods to deliver the results. Next. Siba. And on the part of the worker, is there economic de dependency? Kung sa kanya yung assets at sa kanya yung capital, may autonomy to accept siya, walang dependency, ano? Walang dependency. But that is a question of fact, always. Okay, next. Ano naman ang kontrata ng worker sa buyer? Is this a contract of service or for a sale of goods? Kung ito ay nagde-deliver ng, ano, ng milk tea, nag-advance siya, capital niya, di ba? Capital niya. Tapos biglang na-delay ng kuni, natunaw na yung milk tea, ayaw nang tanggapin ng ano, nung, nung, <laughs> nung customer mahahabol ba niya yung, kaya yung customer sa ipinagbili niya ng milk tea? So these are, these are yes, uh, is this a gig or a job or is there an independent contracting here or an employee, an employment relationship here? 
Uh, supposing it come, uh, they come to you, to the Department of Labor, it's easy for us to say, wala ka ba nang employment relationship eh. Ibig bang sabihin yan, taboy na lang namin yan. Diba? So what do we do? What do we do? Good. Uh, so, uh, now let me, let me end this by saying, for this type of uh, transformations in the world of work, is the labor dispute resolution system prepared? How do you enforce labor standards? How do you resolve conflicts that are not the host solutions or host, uh, host, uh, uh, yeah, host solutions are not specifically defined by these standards? Wala kang standard na gagamitin. Kasi hindi mo malaman kung ano yung, ano eh, ano yung, wala pang, wala pang naimbento. So, is the labor dispute resolution system prepared for this? Uh, there is a, there is a sequential, there are sequential principles in labor dispute resolution. Uh, the first is, step is, of course, prevention is better than resolution. May pati prevent mo. Ayusin nyo na sa baba. Bilaterally, if preventive measures fail, then they should agree how to solve the problem. The employer and the employee must agree how to solve the problem. That's why you have some contracts with grievance mechanism procedures. If the parties cannot solve the problem by themselves, then you go to a public authority to do that. And these are the sequential principles. Una muna, shared responsibility ng parties. And then, uh, ideally, that should trans responsibility should translate to agreements. Go ahead. Uh, consensus and agreement. But if there is a public authority that uh, needs to, be, to resolve it, uh, conciliation and mediation pa rin dapat ang gamitin, baka sakaling magka-agreement pa before you do arbitration and adjudication. Uh, these are the sequential principles of dispute resolution. They are actually embodied in our system. Uh, these are the international, internationally preferred or idealized, idealized uh, uh, model of labor dispute resolution systems. Uh, ngayon, ang, uh, dito sa public authorities, ang uh, modern economies ay administrative authority ang ginagamit or quasi-judicial authority, hindi dumediretyo sa court. Galing na tayo doon sa panahon na dumediretyo tayo sa court. Ngayon ay, uh, the more modern systems actually have the administrative mechanisms to resolve disputes first. On the theory that these mechanisms have simpler procedures and they are more easily accessible to, to parties, especially in an employee-employer relationship context where the employee is always as, at a disadvantage in terms of resources. So kaya yun ang value ng administrative uh, mechanism. Next, please. Uh, ito yung uh, LDR system natin. Pa uh, conformable naman sa, ano, sa conformable naman sa uh, ating idealized model ng labor dispute resolution. Sabi ng batas, mag-start muna kayo sa baba, sa enterprise level, and then there is settlement. If you cannot resolve it at that level, then you go to conciliation and mediation, uh, whether it is collective or individual, and then it is settled. Okay na yon. Otherwise, you go to arbitration, whether voluntary or compulsory. If uh, the resolution is acceptable, then okay na yon. But you go to the Court of Appeals kung hindi pa okay, or to the courts, which has two layers, Court of Appeals first, and then the Supreme Court. And then you have a final resolution of the, of the dispute. Eh, kung certification election yan, dalawang final. Yung order for certification election, granted, then you implement. Results of certification election, another order yan. So dalawang beses din umikot ng ganito. I am told that in the NLRC, for a dispute to be, to, to complete the entire cycle, it takes about nine years, ten. Uh, kasama na yung court. Kasama na yung court. Hmm. So, are we satisfied with that? If the uh, 
if the environment that we live in is fast changing, accelerated transformations, uh, makakasabay ba kaya itong labor dispute resolution system natin? No? So that's the, that's the uh, challenge for everyone. Uh, I end with this because I know that uh, the uh, law center and uh, the labor cluster also has uh, a project on the labor code reforms. Pero ito na lang ang aking ipopos na question sa kanila. Maraming salamat at uh, thank you for listening. So thank you so much, Yusek Bitonio, for giving us a broader perspective on labor and its socioeconomic aspect, as well as us taking, out, taking us out of the classroom and showing us what happens on the ground as far as labor enforcement is concerned. Uh -huh. So before we begin our open forum, just some announcements. Um, we'd like to welcome the 40 FB Live viewers and the 234 Zoom attendees, especially the law school deans who are attending via Zoom. Uh, also, we will be having, we will be serving meals after the program, so please stay. Those with stickers, uh, please proceed to the Ambion room. Everyone else will be served lunch outside. And then for the UP Law students attending via Zoom, uh, the, Zoom li the attendance link will be sent via the chat box later on. So, uh, any questions from the floor? If there are none, uh, I'll read some from the... Uh, Zoom chat box first. So just some comments, uh, Yusek. So there are some who have mentioned that it was Ankla party list with the help of former POEA administrator Hans Kakdak who assisted in the passing of the anti-ambulance chasing law for, for seafarers. So just some comments from them. And then a question, one question from a participant. Since you mentioned the streamlining of the current dispute resolution process, uh, is is there really any concrete initiative from both DOLE or the NLRC to shorten also the, um, the, the, ter the time in which uh, labor disputes are being resolved? I, know, I understand uh, as a labor practitioner myself, NLRC actually has a very, very quick turnaround, at least at the level of the arbiters and the commission. Uh, but are there any current efforts to even shorten that time period right now? With the permission of the NLRC participants here, I, I think that is always continuing. The, uh, there is a process cycle time that is being measured and, uh, and uh, not only the NLRC but all dispute resolution mechanisms of the DOLE try as much as possible to follow the process cycle time. Uh, where is the... Uh, um, uh, sa, uh, sa nakikita natin ngayon, mabilis na rin naman ang NLRC. Hindi ka na makakakita ng dalawang taon sa labor arbiter. Uh, o tatlong taon. Ano? Uh, o kaya pinapagpasapasahan yung kaso. Kasi masyadong mainit. Uh, hindi ka na makakakita ng ganun. Uh, even in the commission, hindi ka na rin makakakita ng ganun. So, I think... Uh, I think uh, I think in all the dispute resolution mechanisms uh, Department of Labor, including the NLRC and the regional offices and the med, med arbiters, uh, they, they are very conscious about the process cycle time. And uh, everybody wants to, uh, of course, uh, uh, comply uh, to an extent possible uh, with that uh, process cycle time. Kasi nakaka-apekto din yan, lalong-lalo na ngayon, year end na, di ba? Uh, at sa kanilang productivity bonus, halimbawa. Uh, uh, ang ba balita ko nga sa NLRC, and I started this when I was still a young director at the BLR, uh, we need hold nga yata yung rata kung ano eh, kung hindi maka-comply maka ng kuta eh. Uh, diba? We need withhold. Ng, uh, so there is an economic penalty against them. Hindi nyo makuha ka agad yung kanilang representation and transportation allowance. I think the, uh, within the NLRC and the uh, uh, DOLE, uh, the, uh, we are looking at strategic changes uh, by way of, as I've said earlier, to the extent uh, that is allowable by the 
rulemaking power of the Secretary of Labor. And uh, we are particularly concerned about one, access. Uh, dapat maintindihan ng mga tao kung ano yung ina-access nilang mekanismo. Uh, pangalawa, doon naman sa dulo, execution. Doon matagal kung minsan. Uh, yung, yung execution ng decision. Uh, mas mahaba pa yung execution proceedings kesa sa pagre-resolve ng kaso. And uh, there are many reasons for that. Ang isang uh, basic reason is uh, that uh, wala nang mahanap na employer. Dahil sa tagal na inabot sa entire cycle of dispute resolution, wala na o nakatago na yung employer. That's one. Uh, pangalawa, there are also very problematic issues, especially if the labor arbiter dismisses a claim, monetary claim, the uh, NLRC affirms the dismissal, umakyat sa korte, granted. Granted. Pagdating sa execution yan, hindi nila malaman kung magkano. Kaya magre-recompute sila, it is as if a new case is filed again. Ganun yan. Uh, and then my favorite, uh, uh, there is a favorite uh, uh, provision among practitioners. Some are happy about it, some are happy about it, depend, unhappy about it, depending on where you stand. Yung tinatawag nila na petition for extraordinary relief. Yan ang... Hindi ba yan nakakatagal o nakakatulong ba yan? Uh, is that not opening a new case? Or uh, reopening a case that is already final? Yan mga ganun na ano. So tinig tinitignan lahat yan. And the idea is to, is to, uh, is to uh, uh, try to simplify as much as possible. So yun yung administrative reforms. Uh, sa korte, eh, sarili namang rules ng court. So... Uh, hindi tayo uh, gagawa ng public announcement diyan na ano pero the 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 thing is that uh, uh, they have the power to set their own rules and we respect that and we abide by the rules set by the Supreme Court. Uh, hindi din namin ang parties kung natatagalan sila I am uh, I I know that there is always a remedy of filing a motion for early resolution, di ba? Kung sa korte Sa NLRC, wala na yun, yung motion for early resolution. Okay, thank you, Yusek. Uh, we only have time for a few more questions. Any questions from the floor? If not, I'll proceed with the Zoom questions. Okay, sige. Um, so has there been, this is also from Zoom, has there been any proposal to shorten the number of working hours per day or week in the advent of telecommuting and from a legal standpoint? What would possibly hinder a proposal to reduce work hours? Not that I know of, uh, not that I know of, yung proposal na yan. Uh, uh, I do not know of any pending legislation that uh, proposes to shorten the uh, working hours. Uh, what could be, uh, what could be... Uh, any hindrance to hindrance? such a proposal? I think, I think the hindrance there is not legal but economic. If you are a productive person, what you want to do is to spend as much productive hours as possible. And that's only not good. That's also, that's, uh, that is not only good for you, but also good for the society. Uh, diba? Uh, yung, 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 uh, I, I think that is the, that is the, uh, may mga countries naman na mas mababa sa walo ang kanilang uh, normal working hours. Uh, I think yung ano yung uh, yung uh, tignan lang natin ngayon yung managing those eight hours lalong lalo na kung work from home arrangements nga yan kailangan ba eight, eight straight hours or pwede bang staggered etc etc so I I think the uh, the uh, if you ask my opinion on that uh, I think it is too early to to uh, to uh, be thinking about a legislation that will reduce the number of hours. But what can probably be encouraged is uh, uh, for parties to do this, maybe at the plant level or at the uh, industry level. And any law or regulation that will uh, 
lead to the shortening or even lengthening of working hours uh, ought to be considered very, very seriously. Uh, yung mga implications nun malalim eh. Uh, last call for questions from the floor. Yes, please. Yeah, there, there is always room for for improvement, skills, competencies. As I've said, uh, conciliation and mediation is not a natural skill for lawyers. Kasi ang training mo ay iba eh. You really have to be trained for that. Uh, yung, uh, I, I mentioned earlier about uh, the uh, optimizing the potentials of conciliation and mediation as a diagnostic process and as a, as a problem solving process that area i think should be that area of competency should be strengthened across the board uh, we have uh, what we call the shadows single entry approach desk officers i call them senators uh, senai single entry approach uh, you you have those uh, those but uh, we continuously train them uh, sometimes they do they they are actually doing this on an ad hoc basis so that you don't get a specialization but we are trying to slowly build up that kind of competency it's just uh, it's just uh, uh, it's just not ideal that uh, after 10 years from the uh, uh, passage of the law mandating conciliation and mediation for all labor disputes the department of labor and employment and its attached agencies still have to come up with uh, with the appropriate dedicated mechanism for that purpose. So, yun siguro ang, ang uh, nakikita natin na administrative reform. By the way, Tarlac State University, if I may plug your university, is the first university that uh, had a uh, collective negotiation agreement in the Philippines. So, thank you for that question. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, final question from the floor. Okay, so if not from the floor, then from Facebook, before uh, the closing remarks from our new dean. Um, so, Yusek, is Dolly really looking into artificial intelligence? If so, how or in what ways? Is AI viewed as to improve the efficiency of workers or as a threat to labor? Uh, it's a, it's a multifaceted uh, opportunity and challenge. Uh, I, was, uh, I did not have much time to prepare for this uh, lecture, but uh, if I had, had I been, uh, had, had I had that, that, that time to prepare for it, I would have brought uh, along with me a uh, chat GPT. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, chat GPT can also summarize your lecture. Yes, it does. But, uh, this is how it works. It summarizes your lecture, but I'm sure it will not be able to it will not be able to include in its summary the underpayment of the Carabao <laughs> because it is not within its universe of data. Iba? What that means is that we are still smarter than the machine. So thank you so much, Yusek. Now may we call on our Dean, Dean Darlene Marie B. Berberabe for the closing remarks.
Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. So ito ang aking kauna-unahan na pagsasalita uh, bilang uh, bagong uh, dekana ng uh, UP College of Law. Paano ko naman matatanggihan si Professor uh, Leo Batad kahit tinext niya ako ng uh, parang uh, parang alas gis na po ba kagabi. Uh, di ako naman ay uh, opo, opo. So kahit hindi ko pa alam ko anong schedule ko today. So uh, gusto kong magpasalamat sa ating uh, speaker na kaninang binabasa ang kanyang credentials ay eh, binubulong ko sa kanya. Uh, Yusek, uh, baka po kayo ay uh, palitan nyo na si President Gigil Jimenez sa uh, inyong mga credentials. Um, gusto ko pong uh, uh, magpasalamat sa labor law cluster, uh, sa pa pamumuno at uh, uh, pag-organisa ng mga ganitong Uh, activity sapagkat sa mga ganitong uh, uh, diskusyon uh, na, na hihimay natin ang mga issue na hinaharap sa ating mga trabaho bilang labor practitioners, labor professors, and labor students. Uh, hindi ko akalain na pagka mga uh, discussion na ganito, dadating na tayo sa issue ng ano na ang impact ng artificial intelligence, pati sa labor law, and how it impacts the employment uh, scenario in the Philippines. So, but the theme today, um, I, I, I really like the theme that it is meeting the ends of social justice. So that means that we should not uh, lose sight of really what is the purpose of our law and our regulations. Because as practitioners, as students, usually we, we become uh, too, much, uh, too much entrenched in the details, in the how, how do you implement the law, what is stated in the law, and sometimes we lose sight of what is the purpose behind the law. And that is to meet the ends of social justice. So that means that We always have to be guided by what is provided in the Constitution, which is for the state to afford full protection to labor. So what does that mean? Local, full protection, so local and overseas, to promote full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. In the issues, in the questions that were raised a while ago, uh, under Secretary, we would like uh, to also uh, share with you that Uh, the UP Law Center has helped uh, draft the labor code, pro proposed revisions for our labor code. And these are now bills that uh, are sponsored by Senator Risa Ontiveros and Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. Uh, we are still waiting for, for these bills to be heard. And our request is for the Department of Labor to support the bills that the UP Law Center ha has prepared to address many of the um, questions that were raised uh, a while ago. So these are to enhance employees' rights. Uh, the, the project also looked at uh, the existing books and added a new book to address gender equality uh, and uh, the... Uh, concomitant rights. So uh, I would like to congratulate again Professor Leo uh, and of course our beloved Professor Dawai who invited me to teach a labor law. Uh, I used thank you at hanggang ngayon po kahit na sabi ko gusto ko magturo ng legal ethics and legal theory nananatili ako sa, uh, sa labor cluster. And I would like to thank Uh, as well, our labor arbiters who are full support for, uh, for uh, NLRC Commissioner and Undersecretary Bitonio. Uh, we are honored by your presence. And thank you so much for the faculty uh, who are present here and in Zoom and for the students and for the other guests. Uh, may this, um, this discussion uh, be... Um, of help to your practice, to your study, and um, promote more uh, discourse. Thank you very much and good afternoon. May we call on Professor Leo Batad to join us on the stage?
So Dean Berberabe and Professor Leo will share a small token of gratitude for our guest speaker who has shared with us his time and precious knowledge this morning and afternoon. <laughs> so thank you so much everyone for joining us today.